All right, welcome. I just wanted to make a quick video how I got my CompTIA Security Plus and Network Plus certifications in the span of just one month. So let's just get right into it. So this is a useful video for anybody who's maybe an IT student or already you're an IT professional and you wanna get your certifications. I'm just hoping that this video can give you some insight as to how to attack it. I know people who spend months and months and months studying and they just stress too much about the exam. Definitely you want to get it. It looks good on your resume. Um, I'm going to get into some of the benefits that I've already seen getting it and what it could possibly do for you. It's also beneficial for people who are looking to change careers. These are entry level certifications. So it definitely does stand out and it just gives you a competitive edge against other people who are in the market. So definitely worthwhile. So what made me get these two certifications is I'm currently a cybersecurity student. I'm an undergraduate studying computing and informatics, and I have a focus in cybersecurity. To be honest, I've seen a lot of other people talking about these certifications. I heard some stuff about the A-plus certification but a lot of people say it's really not worthwhile going and trying to grab it and studying for it. Quite frankly, they say it's a waste of money. Still know the material, but having the certification isn't 100% necessary. So I didn't bother with the A+, plus, but I did go and grab the Network Plus and the Security Plus. What made me personally pursue both at the same time, especially in the time span that I did, was I really wanted to boost my resume and boost my marketability of my skills and just who I am as a cybersecurity student because my my goal was to land an internship. I really wanted to land an internship. I knew cybersecurity, especially at the bottom level, is very oversaturated. And I wanted something that was gonna make me stand out in the market. So that's what made me go for both of them. And then the time frame was just, I had a lot on my plate. I was doing two back-to-back 21 credit semesters, and I just saw that window of opportunity. I kind of just had to lock in. That's really what it comes down to. So, so I was on a deadline. So I actually took these two certifications in the one-month break, the winter break that you get in university. That's when I took these certifications. I actually took my Security Plus before my Network Plus, just because I just felt more comfortable with the material. I know that's a little bit backwards. I know people usually do the Network Plus before they do the Security Plus because the Network Plus gives you a logical foundation for the Security Plus. That just wasn't the way I did it. I felt more comfortable with the material on the Security Plus. I had already took some courses for the Security Plus. So I was just like, let me just go ahead and do it. I took courses actually both for the Network and Security Plus. That's something I do want to clarify. I had a Network Plus structured class and a Security Plus, and they were based off of those exams. And so I took those classes. That was in the fall semester. And then I did that. And it was, it definitely helped lay the foundation, kind of giving me a general mapping of the material that I kind of knew. Well, to kind of expect would be on there. So certain concepts when they came up on the exam, it wasn't foreign to me. So that definitely did help. But let's jump into basically how I did it. Also, just to describe my level of experience before taking these exams, I took these exams towards the end of the year. In the beginning of the year, I didn't even know what cybersecurity was. I was still on YouTube, what is cybersecurity, on the different forums, Twitter, Reddit, trying to just understand what is this field that I'm going to be switching into, get a better understanding of it. My actual learning and knowledge and foundation of cybersecurity came I want to say in about September 2024, that's when I actually started taking courses that were dedicated to cybersecurity, understanding networking, understanding security principles and things of that nature. To clarify, though, I did have a bit of a STEM background. I was in computer science. I was taking some computer science courses. So I switched from business to computer science to then information technology to get an angle on cybersecurity. So let's get right into it. I think this is actually my network plus I didn't actually open it yet, so it's been a few months. I didn't open it yet. I kind of started putting my head down. I had another 21 credit semester that came up literally the day after I took this exam. So my head was dead in the books for another few months. So let's actually just take a look. This is um what they send you here. This is my Security Plus certification right here. Once you open it up, they give you 
they give you like a small card to kind of show, you know, pass my security plus or whatever. And you could actually kind of see the date that I passed that. I don't know if you maybe could see it or not, but December 20th, 2024. So that was like five days before Christmas. You know, my head was just in the books, studying, studying. I took my exams in person. Some people may say in person makes a difference. I definitely liked it better. I was looking online. They said that it was a whole process with doing it online. So I was like, I would much rather go in person, avoid the whole rigmarole and just take my exam. But this is what they give you. This is what the certification looks like. Got my whole government name there or whatever. It's a piece of paper. So I don't want to say like I feel too crazy holding it or anything like that, but I know it's something that I worked really hard for. I put in hundreds of hours of studying to achieve this. So, you know what I mean? It's a testament to the hard work that I put in. So, but it's not the end all be all. And it's definitely not the, the last step of this journey. Let me actually open up my Network Plus and take a look at what they gave me. Go ahead and open this for the very first time. Same exact thing. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Here we have it. Network Plus. And if you check the date on this one, it's January 20th. December 20th, January 20th. Let me actually take a good thumbnail right here real quick. December 20th, January 20th. So exactly one month apart, I took both of these exams. Another card here, pretty cool. So let me get into exactly how I did this, what tools, methods, study strategies worked for me and how it could also potentially work for you. I took these exams in a span of one month. I would estimate considering that I started studying about September for, if you're factoring in the work I was doing for school at that time, maybe about four, four and a half months loosely of preparation. And that's just coursework. That's not dedicated study for the exam. That's not including any practice exam. Exams. The actual studying for the exam for the security plus aside from coursework, which just gave me like an overview of the introduction to the material, I would say was about early December. I started, I was like, all right, I know I want to take this exam. Let me start putting my head down. I was doing a lot of a lot of professor messer, a lot of studying. Um, I actually think I still have some of my books from that time. So I probably went through about two, two uh, composition, Marvel composition notebooks, just studying. So my process, I did take the Security Plus before the Network Plus. When I was studying for the Security Plus, one of the things that I did, it was a lot of acronyms. You got to know your acronyms. Every single acronym that I came across that I didn't know, I wrote it down in my notebook. And I would just try to review that at least once, go over it once, even if it's just simple passive reading, it helps to reinforce because they're not going to explain it to you on the exam. Sometimes it's just going to be acronym, acronym, acronym. And you have to understand what that means to logically understand what the question is asking you. That's definitely helpful. Another thing, break down concepts using the tools you have. Chat GPT is free. So if you have a concept that you don't understand, maybe you don't know what a hot site or a cold site is, or you don't know how to differentiate between a hot site and a warm site, or you you don't understand the troubleshooting process, put that into Chat GPT. Work out your logic, work out your thought process, and then have it correct you where you're wrong and just do those micro revisions or whatever that it may give you and just adjust your thought process off of that. Now, ChatGPT obviously, yes, can be wrong, but it's definitely a good starting point to just being able to think more like a cybersecurity professional, especially when it comes to troubleshooting. A lot of the questions sound like they could be very similar and it just comes down to which one is best suited and having the process of elimination, having the understanding that, okay, it's this one over this one, ChatGPT can definitely help you. So definitely work out your, th your thought process. Definitely write down all the acronyms that you come across. Definitely do that. For other tools and resources, I was doing a lot of YouTube videos. I didn't really need to use, I did watch Professor Mester, he's really good, but I didn't really need to use him as much to introduce the concepts because it was introduced to me already through coursework. Really, it was getting a deeper dive into understanding. Sort of like a disclaimer, I was doing 21 credits at the time. So when I started studying for the Security Plus, I had finals and 
end of the year projects for about seven classes. So it was a lot to manage. There was no work-life balance. Every single waking second was either schoolwork or study. So that's just kind of a bit of a disclaimer of what it took. Immediately after I did the Security Plus, I switched gears. I probably took about two days off, you know, Christmas and everything coming up. Took a few days off to myself just to recharge. You don't want to get burnout either. There's no there's no virtue in working yourself until your body collapses, none whatsoever. So take care of yourself for sure. Um, I had the Network Plus right after, studied for about, I want to say about 150 hours, give or take, for the Network Plus within those few weeks before I took it. And then the day after I took my Network Plus, the next semester started and I had another 21 credits. So that's just kind of where my head was. Another thing that I will stress between these two exams is definitely try to get as much exposure with the PBQs as you can. The way they're worded is a little bit funny. The way the structure of them is not, it just doesn't flow well if that's a reasonable way to put it. It wasn't something I've ever really seen before. You know, the PBQs were, were pretty weird to me, but definitely I know a lot of people failed the test off of the PBQs. So definitely watch out for those. Study them if you can. I always recommend talking to other people who've passed this exam to kind of get insights on things that they would need to study, especially if they're taking it around the same time. I know the exam updates a little bit every few months or whatever they add, maybe more questions, take some questions out, tweak some things around. If someone took the exam two weeks ago, I would definitely ask them some things to just expect and things to kind of look out for, things to brush up on. It can definitely be helpful. The way I handled burnout and distractions was honestly sheer force of will i got a crazy case of burnout in the second semester though so i would go on linkedin to be honest and i would see people announcing their internships or i'll see people saying hey i just got the security plus and the network plus what it's done for me and that kind of gave me the motivation i needed but definitely being off of social media does help you nine times out of ten you're not producing content you're just consuming it and it's not doing anything edifying for you so love yourself just to also touch back, my coursework did include labs. Um, so they were CompTIA Cert Master Labs. It did okay laying the foundation, but I wouldn't say that it gave me what I needed to necessarily pass the exam. The hours that I spent studying practice exams, even having chat GBT, like concepts that I was struggling with, give me 10 or 15 CompTIA Security Plus like questions based off of this concept and just running through that, running through that, running through that or a question that I didn't understand the way it was worded, break this down line by line. What exactly is it asking me? What do I need to be looking out for? Help me understand the structure of this question. You start to notice patterns. Some resources that you can definitely use, Quizlet, a lot of people make Quizlets based off of uh, the exam. So that can also be helpful. I heard a lot about Jason Dion. I personally have not used him, so I can't speak to the effectiveness of his course or whatever material he may provide. But I know a lot of people who say he's worth it. He's worth checking out. So yeah. Now for the Network Plus, the Network Plus, and I'm going to be all honest, it was definitely harder than the Security Plus. The Network Plus it covers a very broad range of material. You have to understand troubleshooting as well to really answer some of the questions that are on it. One of the things that I really didn't spend too much time studying was like the Wi-Fi protocols and things like that. You want to know them for sure. Even in my job now, it comes up, you want to know it. But even if you just take a look right here, this is like a stack of, of the flashcards that I was going over. This is like 10 gigabit base, different things like that. Base T, 808, 802, 11A, just different protocols, different standards that I was going over. I went to the store, I went to Dollar Tree and I just picked up two packs of flashcards. And I was like, you know what? It's a lot of acronyms. It's a lot of just different things, protocols, standards that I need to know. So the actual test day, I don't want to downplay it at all. I was definitely nervous. I live right around the corner from a Pearson View testing center. So I was able to take my exam there. Essentially what I did was I just grabbed a Celsius, went there, they searched you. I sat down in a room. Other people were taking different exams, not necessarily the Security Plus or the Network Plus, but I sat down and just started my exam. A lot of the questions from some of the practice exams did come up. So it was a little bit of relief. 
but certain questions I obviously I've never seen before also came up. So you got to be prepared for anything. That's why you study the material. You don't necessarily just study the questions and try to memorize the questions because you don't actually, you're not actually learning. So that's just something to also keep in mind. The nervousness kind of goes away once you sit down and you start answering some questions. You're going to say, okay, I understand this. I, I, oh, I'm familiar with this concept. Based off of the way some of the questions are worded, you immediately know, okay, I know what that one is. So one of the things that I'll definitely say is don't go on like Reddit and look up things like how hard was the exam or how long did you have to study? Other people's experiences are not yours. In my case, yes, I passed the network plus and security plus in the span of one month. I had a little bit of prior studying to go with that. I was working with people. I was deeply immersed in a environment where that knowledge was just freely flowing. My mentor helped me out a lot. I was studying with my cousin who also passed his security plus prior. So that's just other things to keep in mind. What did I do differently from the Security Plus to the Network Plus? I definitely spent some more time studying acronyms. I can't stress it enough. A lot of the tests is acronyms, reading up and studying on the acronyms, writing down as much stuff as I could. It was just worth it. So probably what a lot of people are doing this for, they want internships, they want better job opportunities. What did I notice after passing these two certifications? My resume wasn't too cybersecurity focused prior to that. I didn't have relevant job experience. The only thing that was really cybersecurity was, I guess, the coursework that I was doing at that time. It definitely does make a difference. I was able to get some callbacks when I applied and that led to interviews. And I did actually get some job offers for for internships. So that was exactly what I wanted. I'm not going to say it's the end all be all. Because when you're applying to jobs, again, I'll probably make a whole entire other video, to be honest, on that because that's its own process. So I don't want to make it seem like it was just get these things and all of a sudden doors are opening. Another thing I would say on the test day experience, time management of the exam, get used to quickly being able to rule off certain things. All of my exams, I got the PDQs first. So I would definitely say probably uh, it depends on how you're able to work. If you work pretty good under pressure, I would say maybe save the PBQs for last, save it for whatever. I'm not going to tell you how to do your exam. It's your life. You have autonomy. Just do it in a way that works for you. If, you, if you're the type of person that likes saving open-ended questions, you know, for last or doing, not to say there is only open-ended questions. I don't want to get a false illusion there. But if you're like the person who likes to save like the more complex questions for last, finish all the stuff you do know, and then come back, do it that way. Some of the PBQs, you may look at this, okay, I know to do this real quick, you do that. Another one, you're like, I have no idea. Let me go jump into the questions, do that too. It's really up to you. Honestly, to give the, the hard truth about these two exams, it's not easy. I would say collectively within that month of like December to January, I probably studied for about maybe three to 400 hours. It's a lot of sacrifices that need to be made. There's sacrifices other than just studying. Um, I was off of social media. You're not really going out and seeing your friends. I mean, it was winter at the end of the day. So it's definitely a lot harder to do in the summer when you are outside and there's more things you want to do. There's sacrifices that do come with it. So that's just something you also have to be privy to. It just comes down really to how much you want it. You're never really going to feel prepared. Even for my Security Plus, I didn't feel prepared past it. Went to the Network Plus. It was the same exact feeling. I didn't feel prepared um, past it. Just something to keep in mind. The... It's a saying, the more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in combat. So the more hours you put in, as long as you're working sensibly and logically, don't spend all your time on questions you already know. You already know it. You don't want to give yourself a false positive. So expose yourself to things that are new, things that are challenging you. Do those. I mean, it, it, it sounds simple. It sounds cliche. It, you know what I mean? But if you're studying something that's par, that's giving you a hard time, you may be like, oh, well, I know this stuff. Let me just review this. It's like... Don't waste your time. Make progress where it matters. Move the needle where it counts. So just some final tips and things like that I want to leave you with. Maybe I'll probably drop a little update to this video as time goes on. Don't just chase certifications. The job I'm working at now, there's people making a lot of money and they don't have certifications, can't pass them to save their lives. As long as you understand the material, you're able to demonstrate you have an understanding of that material, that goes a long way. And don't neglect the soft skills. Don't neglect networking with people. Don't neglect having people who can say good things about you. That goes a long way. So it all goes hand in hand.
enjoy the process. You know, you're only going to be a beginner once. And the price of being a graceful master is to be a clumsy beginner. So ask questions if you don't know, network, and enjoy yourself.